In my last video, I finished the design of the leg for my hexapod. In this video, I will not only finish the body, but also explain the algorithm I used to make it work. And inadvertently make a pretty great Halloween prop. So without further ado, let's get to it. If you have seen the last video, you know that it took quite a bit to design and build this leg. But now that I have a design nailed down, I only need to build it 5 more times. For the arrangement, I debated whether I should go with a rectangular or a circular design. I decided to go circular because the legs interfere less with one another. There are a lot of parts to print, so let's get started. Since I have an old e-bike battery, I thought I could use the cells for my battery pack. If you don't know how to handle unprotected cells, don't do this and just use something like a 3S LiPo. Doing this was quite nerve wracking because shorting out the cells would not have been a great time. Finally, I'm done. That took a while and I still need to wire up the LEDs. Yay! Of course, a few more LEDs can't hurt, right? This takes a total up to 271. This is my first time turning it on. Um, let's hope nothing explodes. No matrix smoke yet. That's good. Yeah, promising. Right 
Yes! Let's go! Now, how do we even begin making something like this work? I already built the IK model in my last video and will let my past self explain it. Most tech support use something called inverse kinematics. Basically, we tell a metric algorithm of sorts where this endpoint should be and it then calculates the necessary angles for each joint. Thanks past me. The most common way for a hexapod to walk is the tripod gate. The hexapod lifts three of its legs and moves them forward. At the same time, the other three move back to push the hexapod. Once it takes a step, it puts the legs down, lifts the other three and repeats the process. And we can smooth that out to get a more fluent motion. But how do we tell the STM32 to do that? Well, let's ignore lifting the legs for now and just look at the front right leg. Again, we move it forward till it reaches some point, let's call that point A, and then move it back till it reaches point B. Then we flip flop between those two points. But how do we get those? Well, let's start by setting a zero position for the leg. If our algorithm says the leg is at the origin, it will be right here in relation to the body. Now we draw a circle on this point for each leg. The leg tip can only be inside this circle. This also keeps the legs from colliding. Now let's say we want to move forward. Again, this leg must move forward until it reaches point A. So we take the origin and project this point onto the circle in the direction that we want to move. I will come back to why we use the origin in a second. We then move towards that target. This is repeated each loop until we are close enough. Now we need to move to point B. This time we take the current point of the leg and project it in the opposite direction. Again, we repeat this until we are close enough. Repeat that cycle for each leg and we can walk. The nice thing about this is that we can change the direction on the fly. If we want to move more to the right, this still works. Now, if we were to use the current position to project forward, we wouldn't actually reposition the leg to take the longer step. But if we use the origin, we do. And in order to rotate, we do the same, but instead in a concentric circle. Combine both and we can move in every direction. Another nice thing about this approach is that it shouldn't be too complex to get it to work on a three-dimensional terrain. I didn't, but that might be something to explore in the future. Explaining it like this, it seems quite simple, but translating that into code was not. The best part is that during the majority I had no way to really debug. For some reason I was not able to use serial prints. So I was forced to use these two LED rings to display numbers in binary. Needless to say that was a pain in the ass. So please enjoy the next 90 seconds of my suffering. But at some point you run out of stuff to go wrong and the things start coming together. To control the hex support I made a simple app with the MIT app inventor. But this is where strategy but this is where tragedy but this is where tragedy tragedy but this is where bad luck struck again. I had deactivated the LEDs during this development because they were kind of in the way. 
but I didn't change anything with them, so they should still work, right? Right? No, no, no. Turns out that if I upload the code normally, it works fine, but if I upload it using debug in VS Code, it doesn't. It only took me two days to figure that out. But with this I was done. I mean, I still found things I needed to fix, like the supply voltage breaking down, oh, fuck. the ice per bus being flaky, but oh, would you look at the time. Let's show this thing off to my family. Mama, du bist genau hinter dem Balken. Ja, das ist gut. Bleib schon mal hier einfach nur stehen. Hallo. Aber ich sehe doch blöd aus. Wow. Der ist hoch. Wow. Da ich da aufstehen soll. Ja. Eine Sekunde, walk. Und jetzt gehe ich vorher. Of course, I had to let my dad control it. Sit down. Okay, that's enough. Let's try it outside. And that makes for another successful project. I didn't really know what to expect from a DIY hexapod, but it ended up working pretty great. As always, you can find all the files in the description down below. It might have some problems, but I'm very happy with what I have right now. 
I will definitely come back to it in the future, but for now I want to turn my attention to some smaller projects. I also recently started university, so I won't have as much time. Thanks for watching. So this is me from editing the video. And while I was taking images for the thumbnail, one of the servos just decided to die. I have no idea why, but it's broken, so I replaced it with one I had still had on backup. If you're building something like an hexapod or really anything that uses a considerable number of servos, make sure you have at least a few of these as backup because you will probably end up replacing at least one of them. And yeah, let's hope this ends up, be, ends up working again and it doesn't break in the next week. I don't want to take apart these legs more than I have to. Thank you.